Yesterday's prophecies, today's headlines. This is the Hal Lindsey Report. And now, Hal Lindsey. Good evening and welcome to this Christmas edition of the Hal Lindsey Report. By popular request, we're bringing back a Christmas uh, program that I did a few years ago called The Mystery of the Magi. You know, Christmas is a time of profound mysteries, and the mystery of the Magi is one of the greatest. But there's another mystery that I want to start this off with. The Apostle John had just returned from being imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos, during which time he received the, the awesome revelations of the person of Jesus Christ that are included in the book of Revelation. He saw how Jesus is now in his glory. He saw all of his divine power as the second person of the Godhead joined to the glorified human nature of Jesus Christ. And it was with that experience that he wrote the most profound words in very simple language in the beginning of the Gospel of John, which I think really applies to Christmas time. Who was it that was born in Bethlehem? He describes it this way. In Greek, it's en arche en ologos, kai ologos en prostan theon, kai theos en ologos, utros en en arche, prostan theon. Literally, this is what it means. In beginning, there always was the Word. The Word always was face to face with God. And the Word always was, as to His person, God. This same One was always face to face with God. And then He makes the profound statement, and the Word, this eternal person who was always face to face with God and equal with God, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. You see, it was this person who is always the one who reveals the invisible God, the second person. That's why it's called the Word, because the Word brings into reality what's in the mind of a person. That's a descriptive title for him. In whatever way God communicates with those outside of the Godhead, it's through the second person that is called the Word. It was this person who created all things that stepped out of eternity into time and chose to be born in a manger. That's one of the great mysteries of Christmas. Now listen to the mystery of the Magi. And I'm reading from Matthew chapter 2 starting with verse 1, it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. <laughs> Man, you talk about being politically incorrect. Uh, king Herod happened to be king of the Jews. And so when these strange, wise men, part of a special cast I'll talk about in a minute, came asking, where is he who is born king of the Jews? Naturally, he was interested, but he was interested because he did not want someone to take his place. And so we read on, verse 3 it says, uh, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. So he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people, and he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the, has been written by the prophet. And they quote him, and he says, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler 
who will shepherd my people Israel. It's in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that was written over 750 years before this event. And then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them at the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them into Bethlehem and said, Go and search and carefully uh, find the child. And when you have found him, uh, report to me so that I too may come and worship him. And after hearing the king, they went their way. And the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and it stood over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after coming into the house, now notice, they come not to a manger, but into the house, because you see, these men from the east didn't arrive on the night that the Messiah was born. They arrived sometime after that because they saw the star on the night that he was born. So they're now in a house in Bethlehem. It says, and after coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Who are the Magi? What are they? And second, how did they get knowledge about the Messiah of Israel and that he would be born king of Israel? Who told them about it? How would they get such information? And third, where and how did they get the sign of a certain star that would herald his birth? And another very important question, why would they make a long and perilous journey to come and see this Jewish child and to worship him? After all, they were not Jews. They were Gentiles. Well, first of all, let's consider who are the so-called wise men, or as it is in the original, the Magi. What were they? Well, in studying this, we find that uh, they were a very special group. And uh, you can go to Daniel chapter 2, and that's the first reference to these people. Uh, they were actually in the court of the king because they were c considered the most well-educated people in the whole realm. And uh, it says that in Daniel chapter 2, verse 2, divides them into three groups. First, there were the magicians. These were scribes who were experts at studying ancient mystery rituals. And they were part of it. And then there, were the, there was a group that was called, in the Hebrew, conjurers. These were people who would conjure up spells using special ways of breathing and whispering. That's why they call them conjurers. But the third and the most important group, and the ones that were always considered superior to all, were the ones called the Chaldeans. Now, these men that appeared to uh, see the birth of Jesus were the Chaldeans. You see, this was a special caste of people from ancient Chaldea. And you could trace their origins all the way back to the Tower of Babel. And the Chaldeans were considered a special caste of priests. They were experts in astronomy. They were experts as they applied their knowledge of astronomy to a religion of astrology. And they were also uh, highly educated in all of the sciences known of that day. In fact, you can trace all of these people to what existed in the court of Egypt. And so 
it is these Chaldeans who were master astronomers who had religious overtones and they used astrology to pinpoint many things that were of great interest to kings in that day. We'll learn more about that in just a moment. But you be thinking about it. Who are these strange people? And how did they get knowledge of a sign? Why would they want to know who was born king of the Jews? I'll be right back. Well, let's return to the mystery of the Magi. You know, as we read in Daniel chapter 2, we find these people listed in the ancient Babylonian Empire, the first great world empire the Bible talks about. And there's a situation in Daniel chapter 2 where King Nebuchadnezzar, the first great king of the Babylonian Empire, uh, had a dream and he wanted his wise men, especially all of the Chaldean astronomy priest, he wanted them to make known the dream and then to tell him what it meant. Well, they couldn't do it. You know, they said, uh, furthermore, it was outrageous that the king would ask them to do something like that because no other king had ever asked them to come up with what he had dreamed without him telling them and then to give the interpretation. And so King Nebuchadnezzar says, I know you're just trying to buy time and so he threatened to kill all of them and turn their homes into a dung heap. Well, it just so happened that a young Jewish boy of the royal family from Judah that had been taken captive had been made part of this cast of wise men. He had been trained by them, but he never forsook his religion. And so when the man came to kill all the wise men, he said, let me see the king, and I will interpret the dream. Well, he did. He told him what he had dreamed, and then he told him the interpretation. So this young Jewish boy established himself right away with all of these great uh, scholars because he saved both their lives and their families' lives. And of course, this happened many times after that. So we can understand how the Jewish prophet, Daniel, uh, who was in that court for at least 70 years, how he would have uh, been received over time as a very cherished and great colleague. So we read that uh, in, in the book of Daniel that as one of those that was uh, part of the uh, whole cast of wise men, uh, he had many times where he demonstrated that he had the wisdom of God. And so I believe that this is where these strange men called the Magi or the uh, cast of Chaldean priests who were master astrologers this is where they must have gotten the information. God must have given a very special sign to these who had become believers in the God of Israel. And many of them became believers in the God of Israel. Even King Nebuchadnezzar became a believer in the God of Israel through the witness of Daniel. And uh, he even wrote a proclamation to all of his realm telling them, that he had believed in the God of Israel. So God must have given Daniel a special sign that he knew these master astronomers would see because they kept track of every star that was visible. And so they, he gave them a special star that he would send when the Messiah was born. And the interesting thing is that over all of those centuries, they kept looking for this star. And they passed on their faith to those who followed them. So over a period of over four centuries, they had been looking for the fulfillment of this coming 
of the one who would be born king of the Jews. And of course, even King Herod knew what that meant. He would be the Messiah. And so this gives us a reason to understand that they would be looking for him because he was the one they understood had died for their sins and for the sins of the world. And so that is why they made a perilous journey. Let me tell you something. To come from ancient Babylon, which then became Persia and was in the territory uh, that is now modern Iraq, to come in those days, especially if you were wealthy as these men were, uh, would be a very perilous journey. But they came. And by the way, it never says that there were just three of them. The reason, I guess, that over time people thought that they were three wise men is because they came with three different treasures, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there were probably a lot more than three. Plus, there would have been a large uh, company that would come with them for protection. So this must have been quite a crowd that came. But the interesting thing is they come to Jerusalem and they say to those who should have known all about this, where is he who is born king of the Jews? And they showed that they were believers because they said, for we have come to worship him. What an amazing scene this must have been. And uh, yet, it says all Jerusalem, not only King Herod, but all Jerusalem was troubled by this. You see, it was very politically incorrect to come in saying there was another king other than Herod. And so he didn't, he calls in the chief priests and the, the uh, uh, scribes of Israel who knew the prophecy very well that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, but they didn't understand the real meaning of it. So why were these sent there? I believe for two reasons. Number one, they must have known because they knew all the things that Daniel taught. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, Daniel made a prophecy which was in their language. They could have understood it. He made a prophecy that the Messiah would come and that he would appear at and uh, proclaim himself the king of Israel exactly 173,880 days from the day that a proclamation would be made to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Well, they, this court became the court of those who followed the Babylonians. They became in the court of Persia. So they would have known that Artaxerxes Langemanus of Persia was the one who gave that edict. And it was to be 69 sabbatical years from then, 173,880 days. So they knew that the Messiah had to come soon. And so that's why they knew that his birth had to be even sooner. And so when they saw this star, they took the perilous journey to see him. I'll talk more about this wonderful scene and why God sent them in an even greater degree right after this break. The birth of Jesus Christ is politically incorrect today, just as it was when he was born. So Merry Christmas. Spanish, Feliz Navidad. Portuguese, Christmas Alegre. Italian, Natale Allegro. Greek, Cala Christogena. French, Joyeux Noel. German, Troy Weihnachten. Hawaiian, Meli Kaliki Maka Haole Makahiki Ho. My only regret is I don't know more languages in which to be politically incorrect. Merry Christmas, y'all. So we return to one of the main reasons that God sent these wise men. Not only did he show those who should have known that their Messiah had been born, had been born king, but he also said uh, and sent them 
to provide for them. This shows, you know, God always provides for his own, but especially here. It says that these men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Frankincense and myrrh were very, very expensive fragrances, almost as expensive as gold. And so it would have been a small fortune that they brought and gave to the young child. Now, that gave provision for that family because Joseph and Mary were very poor. And yet they were warned, God warned Joseph in a dream that Herod would try to kill the child and that they were immediately to flee to Egypt. Well, that would take a lot of money. So God provided for them immediately before they knew they had a need. Remember that as a believer in Jesus Christ. God knows our needs, and he has a way of providing for them. And he knows that as we receive them by faith, he will always provide for us. So this was the uh, great incident that caused a tremendous turmoil within the kingdom. And uh, we're told that when the wise men, the master astrologers, found and worshiped the Messiah, they were warned in a dream by God not to return to Herod, so they returned another way. This made Herod furious. And so he had them go to Bethlehem and kill all the male children that were two years old and under. So this means that Jesus must have been somewhere between a year and a year and a half, and he killed two years old just to make sure. So this was something that was terrible, but God provided for them before they even left. You know, there are a lot of parallels with what's going on here in America today with what happened then, because like Israel, the United States has been born with a rich heritage of the Bible. And from the beginning of America, we have had exposure to the Bible and all that it says about the birth of Jesus, about who he is, where he came from, and why he came. We've had the opportunity to know that he came to die on a cross of wood yet made the hill on which it stood. We know that he was born in order to live as a man and qualify as a perfect man to die in our place and to pay for a pardon for everyone who will receive it as a gift. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas message. You know, one of the persistent ideas of mankind is that somehow he can work his way to be accepted with God and that if his good deeds outweighs bad deeds somehow God's going to accept him but God says no James chapter 2 verse 10 says whosoever keeps the whole law yet offends in one point is guilty of all God's not going to grade your good deeds on a curve and that's why he sent Jesus, his son, to die for every sin you'll ever commit. He purchased for you a free pardon. If you're willing for him to come into your life, forgive your sins, and give you that pardon, and make your life pleasing to God, then right now, just say, Lord Jesus, give me the Christmas present of the pardon you died to give me. I receive it right now. Do that and change your eternal destiny on this Christmas. God bless you, and God willing, I'll see you next week. You've been watching the Hal Lindsey Report. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit HalLindsay.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE.